Mark has two short hunts, one for mule deer in Nebraska and then over to Wyoming for whitetail. But will it be too, too many? There's a buck over there coming running out chasing a doe. That could be our guy. I had a virtual circus of deer surrounding me. We were going to push hard right up to the edge of the brush. There's a buck right there. The quest is here to discover where the buck waits for us. Join in hunting's ultimate test. Experience the skill and determination, the honor and respect, the disappointment and elation, all part of the call of the ultimate challenge, the American Deer. over to the right though. She's not scared. These deer are holding super tight and they're hard to see. Looks like she's all by herself. But without good glassing and taking your time, you never see a deer like that laying up under the brush. We are located in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, but we have property up in central Nebraska in the Sand Hills. We have property on the western part of Nebraska up in some rugged terrain, you know, Pine Ridge kind of area. Nebraska has a wide diversity of terrain. It's varied from one end to the other, east to west, north to south. The western part of the state looks just like the western United States. Big rough country, sagebrush, cedar choked canyon. And from there going east, it slowly goes from pastures and grasslands to big agricultural spreads. All of this combined makes for one great honey hole, whitetails or mule deer. It's simply Nebraska. It's sunrise in Nebraska. I'm right on the Wyoming border, so close I could almost go home. But there's no time for going home. We're muzzleloader hunting. It's December, a special time in Nebraska. It's a great season to be out hunting, and we're chasing mule deer with Triple H Outfitters, Jamie Hanshaw, and I think we're gonna have a good hunt. Right now, we just gotta find a buck, and there's no better time than sunrise in Nebraska. <laughs> I only had three days to hook up with Jamie, and we focused right away. Well, we're on two different groups of mule deer. Jamie spotted one off to our left, I spotted another one off to the right, and we're moving in on them. One of the groups was bedded, the other was mobile, so we decided to follow that mobile group, the one on the move, see where they were gonna end up, and would they pick up a boyfriend on the way. We're probably within 200 yards of the big herd. We think we saw a buck somewhere in this vicinity, so we're taking it real slow. Suddenly, ahead of us, we spotted ears. Sure enough, mule deer on the horizon. First one doe, then another, then another. Fawns here, scattered there, but no antlers. The sun set, and with that, my hopes of the day getting tagged out right away were gone. Well, it's a little crisper out this morning. We're definitely seeing the does. We're just not seeing the bucks with them. So uh, I guess we're gonna have to make a different change of game plan. Yeah, here. we'll just hit some canyons off, maybe off away from does a little bit. We'll see if we can't catch them in some draws. And okay. Some thickets. As we crept along some canyons, looking down in, there, we found a herd of bucks. Finally, a mass group, hounding does, and everything seemed to be playing out in my favor. Don't 
two by two on a small doe, kind of bedded up on that ridge. I mean, it's not what we're looking for, but. There were no mature bucks in the group. There was a couple of one and a half year olds, a couple of two and a half year olds, but no buck older than that. So what was happening up and down the bread basket all the way into the Midwest? Well, I think you already know. 2012, it was the year of the drought. The whole center part of the country was drier than the Sahara Desert. I had not seen a more drier place than when I stepped foot into western Nebraska on this hunt. The day was ending, shooting light was just about gone, and we still hadn't seen a mature buck. And with that, it was on to our last day. Three days for a muzzleloader buck was starting to look like it wasn't going to be enough. The Buck Stops here is brought to you by Ford Trucks, built Ford tough. Nikon, the trusted name in optics. Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Shop at one of over 30 locations or online at sportsmanswarehouse.com. Late season, you never know what you're gonna wake up to. This morning, we got a high wind forecast, got a little bit of snow. I wish we had a lot more snow. It's our last day to hunt. Three days here in western Nebraska. Is it gonna be enough? Well, by sunset, I'll let you know the story. Right now, sun is coming up. We've gotta get back to hunting. Jamie was thinking back to all the little honey holes where he had seen big muleys in the past and we rushed to each and every one as fast as we could. We still were not having any luck. Just could not lay our hand on a big mule deer buck. When the sun set, it was over. What did I learn from this hunt? Well, drought is one element you just can't win over. These deer were moving around. They were nomadic. They weren't staying in their regular bedding location. And then of course you throw a three day hunt into the mix and there was no way to get any credible pattern in place. But as far as meeting up with some great guys and hunting a beautiful location, hey, can't beat Triple H Outfitters. Friendly people, solid country, and just a little bit of rain, it might make all the difference in the world. Seeing a lot of two and a half year olds, seeing a lot of one and a half year olds. But I like a challenge, and that's what we're up against right here the biggest of deer hunting challenges. Now, with a strikeout on Nebraska mule deer, Mark switches to Whitetail and Wyoming, and a special hunt no matter how it turns out. This hunt is taking place at the base of the beautiful Bighorn Mountains. Now, it's down in the Bighorn Basin where we're actually going to be hunting, but you couldn't find a more spectacular backdrop. Now, we're right in the middle of the rut. These deer, they're going to be in lockdown mode, so that can make it a little more difficult. The short days of hunting, I only got two or three days, that's going to make it difficult. And the fact that we have a lower density of deer, this could be a tough hunt. But one of the funnest aspects of this hunt is going to be hunting with Jerry. He's my brother-in-law. My name is Jerry Murphy. I do a little bit of outfitting in the fall for mule deer, whitetail, and antelope. We're on the west side of the Bighorn Mountains here on a place that I knew had a pretty good whitetail population and normally has some pretty good bucks. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Good. Good to be back in Wyoming. I live here, but I never get home here in the fall, so I like I like hunting in my backyard once in a while. I'm glad to see you got here fairly early so we can go out yet this afternoon because we're going to have to hustle with your schedule as oh, short as it is. It's always this way in the fall. And you said over the phone you've been seeing some blue tongue or EHD die off. And yeah, and the numbers are down, and of course it targets your older age class bucks too. So we'll have a real challenge to find a good deer in a day or two, so. I'm up for a challenge and I'm always up for some fun hunting, so. We'll, we'll give it our best shot. So well, let's get after that's it. That's all we can do. Now this area of Wyoming 
is known for big whitetails. Don't get me wrong, hemorrhagic disease or not. Well, what we're gonna do, Mark, we're gonna go over here on the creek, do a little still hunt down there a little ways and then stop and try some rattling, see if we can get a buck to come out. Okay. If nothing happens there, we'll go a little further down where the creek turns and we'll try rattling again there. Sounds good. It's so, the right time of day. They should be getting it, ready to move. They, they should be moving pretty good, yeah. You can find a whitetail buck here that will make the minimums for Boone and Crockett. It's not every year and it's not every parcel of land, but in Wyoming, this is one little gem all the way through this area. So I did have good expectations. Then I started talking with Jerry over the phone. He started telling me that he was seeing fewer and fewer deer. Again, did that sway my decision to not come and hunt? Heck no, I love whitetail hunting. And like I said, a challenge is something that Mark's always up for. Well, we're seeing deer. Yeah, we didn't do much good rattling, but we seen them. What was a doe and two fawns yeah. and a small buck. But most of the deer are across the creek over here and the creek is running high, so we gotta go clear around the other county road and come in from the other end down there and see what we see down there. But we're getting that time of day. We only got about an hour of daylight left, so All right. we gotta hustle. Let's get her done. After a couple of rattling setups and some great still hunting, we headed to an alfalfa field. We didn't have much time, so we just set up from afar and did some glassing just to see who was visiting and where we might set up the next morning. Well, we knew this was gonna be a challenging hunt and it is already challenging. We spotted a nice buck though. He got away from us, the under shooting light. That doesn't mean he got away from us for the entire hunt. We still got a couple days left. And I think for the amount of deer we're seeing, even though it's not a lot, we're seeing enough. We might get a shot, not at a monster, but at a good Wyoming whitetail. Now this area of Wyoming is known for big whitetails. There's a doe and a couple bucks. They're working that edge over there. Deer were starting to stream out of the brakes behind me. I had a virtual circus of deer surrounding me. There's a buck over there coming running out, chasing a doe. That could be our guy, the white horn. Good buck it looked like. I'm looking through some brush. Like, must have got hung up on the fence. Made that noise. There he went. It's been one of those days. Wyoming isn't exactly the whitetail capital of the world. Well, yeah, it's true. Wyoming has antelope, a lot of antelope. They've got elk and they've got some great mule deer hunting but hidden down low in some of the creek bottoms and rivers, you'll find whitetail deer. For Mark, this hunt is also a chance to meet the in-laws as he hunts with his brother-in-law and outfitter, Jerry Murphy. But even with the rut, the odds are not looking good after a whitetail die-off, so time to try something unconventional. Well, I think our plan is gonna work, but we've got a lot of challenges, you know. Your time is limited for the hunt. The deer whitetail population is way down. In this ladder plan, you know, that's all about, that area is so open. You just can't walk in and, and try to stalk those. You know, I, I love spot and stalk hunting. And I know you, that's your favorite, but just getting in position on those deer is tough. 
We knew where the deer wanted to go. They eventually wanted to end up on an alfalfa field. But in between the brush and the alfalfa field was some sage and one giant haystack. But I wanted to get settled in because I knew those whitetails would quickly be coming out to the field. Well, Jerry has just dropped me off. We used the ladder to get, I'd say we're close to 20 feet up in these hay bales. And I have just a super overview of our shooting area. Now, last night and this morning, the whitetail bucks all passed within a couple hundred yards of this haystack. So it should be ideal for getting a good shot. Now, I should probably get set up here and shut up so we can get down to deer hunting. There's a doe and a couple bucks that are working that edge over there. The activity's already starting, and I think it's going to be starting for the day because it's such a gray overcast day and it's so cool. These deer are going to move on and off. I was all smiles as I was thinking that this was going to work. The deer were there. They were coming out already mid-afternoon. And then I just happened to glance off to my right, and what did I see? Oh, man. Here comes the cowboys moving those cattle across this pasture. They have all days for him to decide to need to move pastures. As soon as the bulls were settled in another pasture and the cowboy left, the deer started to show up again. And they showed up big time. Racing from the cover, some even running all the way across the field. Deer were starting to stream out of the brakes behind me. I had a virtual circus of deer surrounding me. There's a buck over there come running out, chasing a doe. That could be our guy, the white horned one. She's kind of coming out this way. At two different points during that sit, I had just average four by four whitetails come out. I was still holding out for maybe a three and a half or older buck to show up. And as that buck cruised off, I could see that the day was starting to end. Shooting light was diminishing. The deer were kind of scattering out. And as the day came to a close, I knew I was up against a real hard hunt. Instead of holding back and sitting at the haystack, we were going to push hard right up to the edge of the brush and see if one of those bucks would poke his head out. There's a buck right there. Man, he's just, he's on a line right to me. The Buck Stops Here is brought to you by Ford Trucks, built Ford Tough, Nikon, the trusted name in optics, Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Shop at one of over 30 locations or online at sportsmanswarehouse.com. When hemorrhagic goes through an area, it wipes out everything, but it seems to take a lot of the older bucks. And the reason that is, or a lot of people thinks it is, because the older buck density is so much smaller. So it knocks those out. You don't see them as much. And you tend to see a lot of young bucks like we're seeing here. Now, I didn't see any big bucks. Instead of holding back and sitting at the haystack or sitting back and watching the alfalfa field, we were going to push hard right up to the edge of the brush and see if one of those bucks would poke his head out. So instead of twiddling our thumbs, waiting for bucks that may not move for several hours, we headed back, grabbed a sandwich, and regrouped. The Ram Box. Not only is it convenient, 
but it makes use of wasted space that most truck companies just ignore. Not my Ram. I got room for all kinds of gear and gadgets. Man, he's just, he's on the line right to me. I just can't shoot a buck like that. He's just a young buck and I was kind of hoping one of these other three-year-olds would show up and it's just not gonna happen. It'll be a better buck next year, and I think the way it looks, this place is gonna need a better buck. This hunt, well, it turned out to be more challenging than I ever imagined. Fewer deer than we'd expected, a short time frame to get the job done. But would I trade it? Heck no. Hunting is a learning experience, and if you're not learning something during your hunt, well, then you probably aren't hunting right. And there are no guarantees in hunting. The day that someone can guarantee me success on any hunt, that's probably the day I'll quit hunting.